Hey, this is Warren Redlick. Let's talk a little bit about Tesla stock. It's up a little bit today. I think there's a lot of good news on the horizon. Tesla's the next Tesla t-shirt is here. I'm gonna talk about it in a second. Are you ready? Let's go. So I'm wearing the Tesla's the next Tesla t-shirt. And you can see here, there are dips in the Tesla's the next Tesla t-shirt. It, it's not all up. And you can see it right here. You can see there's a dip right here. And we're, maybe this is right about where we are now. And there's gonna be another dip, right? There's another dip up here. It's not all one straight line up. It's gonna be a bumpy ride. That's just the nature of being a Tesla investor. What we're seeing now is, in my opinion, very good news as expected. It, it, it comes out over time. It's not all like an endless stream of positive news. There's lulls. There's moments where there seems to be bad news that isn't really bad news, but there's a bunch of good news that just happened in the last couple of days. So here we have Giga Berlin making over a thousand cars in one week. That's a good start. So Tesla in Giga Berlin is ramping. A thousand a week would be 50,000 a year at that pace. We know it's going to ramp to much higher to 5,000 a week, maybe ultimately 10,000 a week. At 10,000 a week, that would be 500,000 a year. That's the ultimate capacity of the company, of the, of the factory. Really good chance that we will be at 5,000 to 10,000 a week by the end of this year, ramping towards that 10,000 a week. This is a sign of Tesla's future production out of that factory and they may be able to ramp beyond that level in the future. Giga Berlin and Giga Texas are the next generation of production. Their manufacturing methods are more advanced than what we have in Fremont and maybe than what we have in Shanghai. And that's a step towards the factories that are coming in the future. But this is just a good sign we're seeing progress. It's ramping. We're waiting for Texas to ramp, but remember Texas started later than Giga Berlin. So we don't see a lot of big numbers out of Texas yet. I suspect that's coming soon. Very optimistic about the future of Tesla. This is one good sign, and there's more. Shanghai is increasing production. There was a report from Chris Zhang. Is he accurate? I don't know the reliability of this statement. He said that Tesla China delivered 46,000 vehicles during the month of June, as of June 19th. That's less than two-thirds of the month. So you would expect if you just simply repeated that rate, you would add another 23,000 units. You'd be at basically 70,000 units for the month. 70,000 units a month is like 840,000 a year. That's the pace. And it's probably ramping and growing more. So we're going to see more and more production out of, out of Tesla Shanghai. We know they're planning to build a second factory, or they may have already started building a second factory in Shanghai. So Tesla's production in China is ramping. It's ramping fast. It's ramping high. We're going to see a huge, huge volume of vehicles produced. And ultimately, we're going to see those two factories, the current Tesla Shanghai and the next Tesla Shanghai, we may see more than 2 million vehicles a year just from those two factories. Remember, we produced less than a million vehicles last year. We're trending towards maybe 1.5 million this year globally, but now we're looking at potentially 2 million vehicles a year just in China. Then we're going to ramp Texas. Three months probably going to reach a million a year. Texas is probably going to be more than 2 million a year. Berlin is ultimately going to be more than a million a year. We're going to see huge, huge volumes from these factories, and then there's going to be more. I think there's going to be a Giga Osaka. Why is Panasonic building a 4680 cell factory in Wakayama, Japan, right out of Os outside of Osaka? Why would you choose that location to build 4680s unless you expected to have a customer building vehicles with 4680s nearby? It doesn't make any sense. Tesla's probably going to have a location in Osaka. Is there something coming in Indonesia? Uh... Elon was meeting, I think it was Indonesia or Malaysia. I thought it was Indonesia that Elon met with the president of Indonesia. And that's going. There's more about Shanghai. Goldie 2022 thinks that, you know, we're, we're trending towards 70,000. He think we might hit 75,000. There's some hints about there were some things that slowed production in the first part of June that might be out of the way. So that might lead to even more production in June than we thought. So we may hit 75,000 in one month. These are very promising signs. Not that Q2 numbers will necessarily be gangbusters. But that the path, the pace, it's really the pace of production that matters. Because if you have a high pace of production, then going forward, you expect that to increase. And that's where you're headed in the future. The fact that you had a lull in production in Q2 is pretty much irrelevant for long-term investors. Short-term investors don't like seeing bumps in the road like that. But bumps in the road are what happened. That's, that's the whole point. We have bumps in the road. There's going to be dips. And there's going to be ups and downs, you know, and that's that there's a dip here. We're going to have an, we're going to go up to $5,000 a share and it'll drop down to 4,500 and everybody's going to freak out. Just remember we were down here. We're climbing. 
okay, this is 700 or 600 or whatever. We're headed up. It's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm a huge believer. I'm a huge investor. I'm a huge believer. I think it's coming. I wanted to talk about a couple other things. The other thing I want to talk about is some Tesla news stories in the media. So here we have Jeff Bezos' newspaper, the Washington Post, running a headline that Tesla is running autopilot and involved in 273 crashes reported since the last year. Tesla is the first word in the headline. Autopilot's in the top of the headline. Crash. Tesla crash headline. Tesla autopilot crash headline gets more clicks. Think about this for a second. There are roughly 6 million crashes a year, car crashes a year in the United States. 6 million car crashes a year. Okay, and we're talking about 273. 60,000 would be 1% of the crashes. 6,000 would be one-tenth of 1% 1 of the crashes. 600 would be one one-hundredth of 1% 1 of the crashes. We're talking about less than one one-hundredth of 1%. One like less than half of one one hundredth of one percent of the crashes. Why why is this deserving of a headline? This is an incredibly small number of crashes. When you have six million car crashes a year, why why are we talking about about two hundred seventy? Why is this notable? Now the the of course the headline is misleading. The article itself is about advanced driver assistance systems, not just about Tesla. Honda's in the story, Waymo's in the story, there's others in the story. But you know, we gotta grab attention by talking about Tesla. Having Tesla and crash in a headline seems to generate a lot of clicks. And where's the context? Nowhere in this article do they mention that there are six million car crashes a year. Right? They leave out that detail. Whether there's one million or six million, I don't care. 273 is a small percentage of all car crashes in the country. Why are we talking about 273 crashes? It's just nuts. And, and look, the NHTSA released data. Lots of media jumped on it. Big story. Tesla's involved in crashes, yada, yada, yada. And you can see it. Far more than previously known in providing concrete evidence regarding the real world performance of its futuristic features. I, I feel like Alvin, if you, have, if you know Alan Iverson, the Philadelphia 76er basketball player, we're talking about practice. When you just talk about practice, we sitting here, I supposed to be the franchise player and we in here talking about practice. We're talking about practice. We're talking about 273 crashes out of 6 million. Why is there this intense focus? Why is a federal regulatory agency focused on 273 crashes of Tesla cars when there's 6 million crashes with human drivers? And we don't know how many of the 273 were caused by autopilot versus autopilot was operating when some other car crashed into them. We don't have any sense of this data. Somehow this, out of 6 million crashes, these 300, less than 300 crashes, deserves the intense focus of, the, of Joe Biden's National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. Here it says the, that the data that was published shows that Tesla vehicles make up nearly 70% of the 392 crashes involving ADAS systems reported since last July. The key word is reported. Tesla reported every crash. Are the other car makers reporting all the crashes involving ADAS systems? Tesla collects that data right away and has that data readily available. The other car companies don't have the same access to data. But even 392 crashes is nothing. This is a small volume of crashes. Of the six fatalities listed in the data set published, five were tied to Tesla vehicles. Five fatalities out of 42,000 a year. 420 would be 1% of, of fatal crashes. Right? We're talking about five. Again, we're talking about one hundredth of one percent of the crashes. Were they caused by the Tesla vehicle, or did somebody else cause the crash? Did autopilot play a role in it? Was a human driver causing the accident and then blaming autopilot? We don't know any of this. There's, there's, there's a massive lack of context in this article. It's just an, an, an opportunity for the media to bash Elon and Tesla. That's all it is. They've got this bit here. But some transportation safety experts, are we talking about Dan O'Dowd? who's not really a transportation safety expert, have raised concerns about the technology since it is being tested and trained on public roads with other drivers. Teenagers are being tested and trained on public roads with other drivers. They never make this comparison. We have a massive human driver beta program going on where 15 and 16 year olds are put behind the wheel of cars, their parents are sitting in the passenger seat, their parents have no professional driver training, and they're supervising their children learning to drive, and the parents don't have access to the steering wheel or the pedals, they can't take over if the kids make a mistake. When I'm driving FSD beta or navigate on autopilot, I can take control anytime. My hands are right at the wheel if they're not on the wheel, and my feet are near the pedals. I can take control at any time, and I have. It makes mistakes, and I take care of it. 
And we see that federal officials have targeted Tesla in recent months with an increasing number of investigations, recalls, and public admonishments. Why is the Biden administration attacking Tesla? There's more coming below where the uh, Democrat senators are attacking Tesla again. So we got the NHTSA administrators saying the technologies hold great promise to improve safety, but we need to understand how these vehicles are performing in real world situations. Buy a Tesla. Go for a drive. Bar, go with me. You can, you can ride in my Model 3 with FSD Beta. You can ride in my Model X with Navigate and Autopilot. You can see how the vehicle is performing in real world situations. But when your data set reveals that there are 273 crashes or something like that involving Teslas, out of 6 million, it should tell you that this is not an important fact. But this is not, these are not the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids you're looking for. These aren't the droids we're looking for. If you're looking for what's killing people on public roads, it's pretty clearly not Tesla's on autopilot. It's pretty clearly not FSD beta that's causing the mayhem on the roads. 42, 43 million deaths a year, 6 million crashes, and you're focused on this very, very small number. Why? Because they hate Tesla and they hate Elon. Why does the media focus on it? Because it gets some clicks. Now notice this, Tesla did not immediately respond to a request for comment. Tesla doesn't have a PR department. They don't have a media relations department. And there's no point in responding to your request for comment. First of all, immediately, did not immediately respond. You're expecting immediate responses now? But Tesla has said in the past, I give Washington Post credit for this, it is said in the past that autopilot is safer than normal driving when crash data is compared. Yeah. Companies also plotted the vast number of traffic crash deaths on U.S. roadways annually, estimated at 42,915 in 2021. And then hailing the promise of technologies like autopilot to reduce the frequency and severity of traffic crashes and save thousands of lives each year. Yes. I mean, at least they gave, I give Washington Post, they actually gave something that Tesla has said in the past and addressed it. But again, think about that 42,915 deaths in 6 million crashes. And we're talking about 270 crashes and maybe five deaths. Where's the focus? Where's the attention? And they, they point to something Elon, I remember when Elon said this, that as recently as January, there'd been no crashes or injuries involving the full cell driving beta software, which has been rolled out to a more limited number of drivers for testing. There's over 100,000 now. A lot of people testing FSD beta. And the officials said their data was not expected to specify whether FSD was active at the time of the crash. Why not? What are you doing? What is the point? What is the point of this data if you're not going to indicate whether FSD is active at the time of the crash? There's this bit. The data does not lend itself easily to comparisons between different manufacturers because it does not include information on how many vehicle miles of different driver systems were used across or how widely they're deployed across car makers' fleets. Yeah, well, we know that Tesla's 8S systems are in every car. Some of them are more advanced than others. The regular autopilot isn't as advanced as FSD beta, obviously. What you, how do you compare them? And then the fact is that Tesla's FSD beta works pretty much everywhere. Navigate on autopilot. One thing I found is navigate on autopilot will not activate on a road that doesn't have a center line. There's certain places where navigate on autopilot will quit. Occasionally, FSD beta will quit and insist the driver take over. By and large, Teslas will drive everywhere with their ADAS systems. Most of these car companies, their ADAS systems will only operate in limited circumstances. So that's not a fair comparison. And people drive their Teslas more than other car, other, that people drive other cars. I just did 6,400 miles in 10 days. And this is, this is where we get into the experts. Phil Koopman, an engineering professor at Carnegie Mellon, says it revealed that more crashes are happening than in its had previously known. We're talking about three or 400 crashes out of 6 million. How is that more? This is a very, very small number of crashes. Why are you obsessing about a small number of crashes? Another expert says the promise of these, the potential of these is ultimately make driving safer. Yes, it's an open question whether these systems overall or individual systems have accomplished that. Okay, but we know that we're talking about a small volume of crashes instead of a large volume of crashes. What are we gonna do about the human drivers? The human drivers cause 43,000 fatalities and 6 million crashes, and we're talking about this. I really love this bit. Companies such as Tesla collect more data than other automakers, which might leave them overrepresented in the data. According to experts in the systems, as well as, this is the best part, some officials who spoke on the condition of anonymity to candidly describe the findings. Okay, so people inside government are afraid to say openly, we know that Tesla's safer because they don't want to anger Biden. They don't want to anger the people at the top of NHTSA who are out to get Tesla. So they don't want to say openly, well, you know, honestly, these facts aren't bad for Tesla, but don't quote me. Don't put my name on that. And here, here's where we get into the Democrats. Senator Richard Blumenthal, Democrat of Connecticut, called the findings cause for deep alarm. What are you talking about? 
Six million crashes a year, and you got people, you're trying to get people worried about 400? Senator Blumenthal, Senator Markey, criticizing Tesla for putting the software on the roads without fully considering its risks and implications. How about you're not considering the risks and implications of keeping this software off the roads? We know this is keeping people safer. We know that human drivers are dangerous. We know that self-driving cars with human supervision are significantly safer than humans driving alone. Why? Why are you, why are you getting in the way of this? The frequency and severity of these crashes is a cause for yellow lights flashing and maybe red lights flashing on some of this technology. The frequency and severity, we're talking about an extremely, incredibly small volume of crashes. This, and I, I wanna say this, I know I have people who subscribe to my channel who identify with the Democratic Party and they get frustrated when I'm criticizing the Democrats. Here you have it. You've got Blumenthal and Markey. You know, people are like, oh, it's just those. It's just Bernie Sanders. It's just the radical left. These are mainstream Democratic senators who are bashing Tesla. They're bashing Tesla and they're bashing Elon. Joe Biden's, you know, this is your party. I'm sorry that your party is attacking Elon and Tesla. And I'll, I'll just point out today on Twitter, I noticed that some Republicans are criticizing electric vehicles, not naming Tesla by name. It was a GM event. And oh, your EVs are running on coal. As if Republicans are suddenly opposed to coal. Right? Are, are, there, are the Republicans opposed to coal now? Am I missing something? Lauren Boebert was one of them. Make up your minds. Are you guys against coal or are you for coal? If you're for coal, who cares if the electricity is coming from coal? Tesla vehicles running on coal-based electricity are still more efficient than gasoline vehicles or diesel vehicles. And here's, again, this is these Democrats, Markey and, and uh, Blumenthal. They're deeply troubled by the data, calling on regulators, all its investigative and regulatory authorities to shed needed light on this out-of-control industry and impose guardrails to prevent more deadly crashes. This software is preventing deadly crashes. This is saving lives. This is saving us from crashes. And these idiots, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't, just from a, a strategic standpoint, why do the Democrats keep attacking a company that is popular with Democrat voters? Why do you keep attacking your base? I don't understand it. In the letter, the, the senator specifically pointed to the staggering 273 crashes that Tesla reported. Again, this is crashes that were reported. It doesn't say that Tesla's caused the crashes. They were involved in crashes. But 273 out of 6 million. Why aren't these guys upset about the human drivers? They talk about driver assistance technology, and then they say, but none of them on the other companies operate in as broad a set of conditions, such as residential streets, as Tesla systems do. Yeah, I mean, I'm driving my Tesla, and it'll go just about anywhere. FSD beta will go almost anywhere. I'm not sure if it will drive on roads without a center line. I think it will. My Navigate and Autopilot will not drive on roads without a center line. And just to add that experience, in uh, Ackworth, Georgia, I was in my friend's neighborhood. There was no center line on the streets, and the car wouldn't, wouldn't allow me to activate um, Navigate on Autopilot in that circumstance. But Tesla's Autopilot is on around 830,000 vehicles. Nobody has this volume of data on this many cars. And there's this concern about parked emergency vehicles. We don't know how many of those were human drivers crashing into parked emergency vehicles and then blaming the software. Right? We just don't know that. You're looking into this may exacerbate human factors or behavioral safety risks. It may also ameliorate human factors and behavioral safety risks. They're looking at one side of the story. They're not looking at the other side of the story. And then they always bring up old stuff. Autopilot has been tied to deaths and certain crashes. The Delray Beach crash, which is just north of where I used to live, and the Mountain View crash, those are old stories. Those are like five years old, maybe six years old. Why are we talking about six-year-old software? The software running on Teslas now is nothing like what they were, what they were driving then. And those were human error. The one in Delray Beach in particular, I remember that one. The driver wasn't paying attention. You're supposed to pay attention. But here you have Honda's spokesman saying that, that we should be cautious when comparing companies' crash report data, noting that the firms have different ways to collect information. Honda's reports are based on unverified customer statements regarding the status of ADAS systems at the time of reported crash. So Tesla's data is based on Tesla's data, right? Of whether autopilot's operating or not. The Tesla data doesn't indicate who was at fault for the crash. Honda's admitting we don't actually know whether ADAS was operating at the time of crash. We rely on what the customer tells us. Their customers probably don't know they have ADAS systems. I love how you get down to the bottom of the article and you see Honda and hear Waymo saying, well, we need the data to be consistent. It's not really fair to compare because the reporting requirements aren't the same. The way things are evaluated aren't the same. Why isn't that at the beginning of the article? Hey, you know, Tesla's reported in 2270 crashes, but we can't really compare this to other data because it's not uniform data because that wouldn't grab your attention in the headline or an opening paragraph. They got to get the bad story out first, and then they, at least the Washington Post clarifies it later in the story. A lot of the stories I saw didn't even come this close to clarifying what was going on.
The incidents were heavily concentrated in California, Texas, the two most populous states, and also the U.S. locations Tesla has made its home. California and Texas are the two largest states, and California has the highest density of Teslas because Tesla manufacturers in California, and the, the, pop, the density of Teslas in California is like double any other state. It is the most popular state for Teslas. So that's one article. Let's look at the next one. This is the publication I love to hate, Business Insider. Bumpy road ahead for Elon Musk as Tesla faces world, uh, losing world's biggest electric car maker crown study, he says. Elon was just asked about this in a Bloomberg interview from when he, there was a, some conference in Qatar, Q-A-T-A-R in the, in the Arab world. And Elon appeared by Zoom or whatever. And uh, Elon was, the, the story here is that um, Volkswagen is becoming the world's biggest producer by increasing European and Chinese sales. And somehow, I think the number is that Volkswagen is going to get to 2 million. A study by Bloomberg Intelligence expects the German giant to double production of more than 2 million battery powered vehicles in 2024. Um, we're in 2022 now, and I'm expecting Tesla to deliver 1.5 million vehicles. 2023, I think Tesla delivers 3 million or more. 2024, Tesla might hit 5 million vehicles. And Volkswagen might produce 2 million in 2024, and somehow that displaces Tesla. Who did the math on this? Who did the math and figured that if VW makes 2 million vehicles in 2024, that's going to be more than Tesla makes in 20. Who, who figured, are they looking at the factories? Have they seen the size of Giga Texas? Have they seen what's being done in, in Shanghai? I mean, it, I think Tesla Shanghai might produce more than 2 billion vehicles in 2024. This is just so ridiculous. Where's Volkswagen getting their batteries from? How are they going to be producing their vehicles in volume? This is just Business Insider looking for a headline to bash Tesla because that's what Business Insider does. Tesla was an early entrant in the EV revolution. Tesla created the electric vehicle revolution. They weren't an early entrant. They created the electric vehicle revolution. And it says competitors are slowly taking advantage of their scale to eat into some of that market share, though. There, this is one of the, the typical misleading statements about market share. There's no EV market. There's a vehicle market. And Tesla's growing their share of the overall vehicle market. And maybe Volkswagen, by shifting into EVs, is increasing their EV share of the overall vehicle market. If the EV market is growing and Tesla's sales grow, the idea that they're losing market share in a fictional electric vehicle market is just dumb, and they're not losing market share. Tesla's, mar Tesla's growing like gangbusters. They're getting a huge, huge share of the vehicle market, and it's growing. Ford has led the charge, oh, the charge, with its Ford F-150 Lightning, which has received 200,000 orders. Can they make them in volume? GM is pushing ahead on its next generation Ultium batteries. They got a brand name for their batteries, and that's somehow exciting. What does this sentence even mean? Volkswagen is also considering of its sports car maker Porsche, which also has an electric model. Considering? What is that, that sentence doesn't even make sense. What, what, is that, what does that even mean? This is like Business Insider. Do you have editors? What does that sentence even mean? Porsche Taycan's a nice car. I think they're going to come out with a, what is it called? I think they have a, a, a Porsche SUV coming out soon. I think Porsche has an EV uh, SUV coming out in 2023. It's great, but Porsche is a low volume manufacturer. That's not a threat to Tesla. General Motors is struggling to make vehicles. Ford is struggling to make vehicles in volume. Let's see it. I mean, I just saw a Mach-E on the road yesterday. Mach-E GT on the road. I like seeing that. I like seeing other EVs on the road. They're not displacing Tesla. They're displacing internal combustion engine vehicles. Bring them on. The more the merrier. So I just want to stress, we keep seeing good news. The media tries to spin bad news about Tesla. If you read through the news, you realize it's actually good news. Tesla does not face a threat of losing EV market share because there is no EV market. Tesla's production is growing. Tesla's delivering more vehicles. We're seeing growth in Giga Berlin. We're seeing growth in Giga Shanghai. You know, we're, Tesla's the next Tesla. Tesla's growing like gangbusters. Please check out the t-shirts at elonbits.com. Check out my other videos. Please support me on the Locals platform, the Daily Lie, warrenredlick.locals.com on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. And thank you so much for watching.